Hello, everyone, and welcome to the overview of Chapter 5, The Newtonian Revolution. This chapter is mainly concerned with three scientists, Robert Hooke, Isaac Newton, and Edmund Halley. Now, for the sake of the midterm, I really want you to focus on Hooke and Newton, their relationship, their life stories, and we'll save uh, Edmund Halley until next um, questions on him anyway, until next chapter where they feature him a little bit more. All right. Very, very different personalities in this chapter. On the left, we have a picture here of Robert Hooke in front of some of the things that he invented. Um, you'll see behind him a red compound microscope. We'll talk about that in a second. And fossils and light and uh, motion. These were all areas that uh, Hooke took a huge interest in. And of course, to the right, there is Isaac Newton. And Isaac Newton, again, we'll talk about him in a little more detail, um, but there was uh, quite a conflict between the two of these gentlemen. Remember that Hook is a little bit older than Newton. That plays, uh, plays into the chapter. Uh, let's go to the next. Uh, one of the things that made Robert Hook such an amazing scientist was the fact that he was constantly inventing or improving. Even though Anton Leeuwenhoek, a Dutch lens maker, was given credit for discovering or inventing the microscope, I should say. Uh, it really was Hook that turned it into a powerful, powerful tool. Because Leeuwenhoek, could, the best he could do was maybe 50 power, 60 power. Um, here we have Robert Hook taking two lenses now, the eyepiece and the objective, magnifying their vision 10 times 10, 100, 10 times 40, 400 power, uh, and really discovering lots of things, including writing a very, very famous book. Uh, the book uh, was called Micrographia by Robert Hooke, and in it he was the first scientist to term the, uh, the term cell, using cells for uh, pretty much anything that was alive. Here on the left, a very famous picture of cork cells. These were dead cork cells, but he saw all these tiny little compartments and he gave them the name cells. He also looked at insects and fleas very, very closely. He also um, did studies on the theories of uh, light and how light traveled. You'll read about that in this chapter also. Uh, both Hooke and Isaac Newton played a key role, as the author says, of turning the Royal Society, the first scientific society, from a gossip room club to a real scientific uh, community. But I'd like you to take a look at this picture. This picture was taken of Royal Society members in 1950. Okay, not that long ago. We're talking about, you know, probably 65, 70 years ago. And notice that there are no women in this picture. Uh, science, even until mid-20th century, was very much the province of men. That's why I was glad to see Leah post that to the Google community about uh, a famous female mathematician that you can read about and maybe do your paper on. So the role of women was very, very different over the ages, especially when it came to science. Here's a better picture, a closer picture of Robert Hooke, which has um, some of the things that he worked on. He also worked on air pressure. He worked on uh, air pressure on the left there, the barometer. Uh, a lot of things with design and maps and, uh, as we mentioned, light and t uh, telescopes and microscopes and living things. That's why they uh, have a picture of there with a spring. He also did uh, uh, experiments on motion. An amazing scientist, very personable, a great person, always connecting people, always uh, a real advocate for science and, and as a collaborative endeavor. The chapter then goes on to talk about uh, a young Isaac Newton and what his uh, solitary upbringing was like and how that solitary upbringing really kept him uh, or maybe molded him as a person who was isolated from a lot of his peers. He was very jealous of the work that he did and was not willing to share it a whole lot. Uh, and you'll read a, a, in a lot more detail about that. Of course, Newton's uh, groundwork uh, on things like light and color, uh, especially those two, led to conflict with Robert Hooke because Newton was not, was not a person to spread a lot of the credit around. He wanted sole credit for his work. Uh, he also invented uh, calculus. He also did work on gravity. Uh, Newton was lauded throughout his life as an amazing scientist, and he was. He was. He, he just his working, uh, his working style was so different from that of of Hooke. 
Uh, and oh, they note that uh, Newton did very little new science after the age of. Matter of fact, he got into all sorts of other interesting uh, and bizarre uh, habits after that. Uh, please, in the chapter while you're reading, make sure that you note the conflict between Newton and Hooke and how it stems from their personality and what they accomplished. Uh, there's a wonderful part in the chapter where after Hooke's death, uh, it was Newton that was in charge of moving everything from one location of the Royal Society to another. And one of the members had noted in his diary how incredible the portrait of Hooke and another scientist were in the old location. Uh, however, when those portraits were moved over to the new location, Robert Hooke's was nowhere to be found. Uh, the author implies or states that that's just another example of how Newton tried to squash Hooke's contributions to science. Uh, they mention in this chapter Edmund Halley, and uh, Halley was quite an amazing scientist. As you can see from the beginning of the chapter of chapter 5, uh, our author really doesn't know who to credit with the most uh, accomplishments because all three, Edmund Halley, Robert Hooke, and Isaac Newton were amazing scientists, but I won't ask any questions in the midterm on Halley until we get to chapter 6. So remember, uh, take notes and read the entire chapter, but for, as far as the midterm is concerned, I will focus on the achievements of just Robert Hooke and Isaac Newton, but I will uh, have a few questions on the relationship between Hooke and Newton. Uh, keep reading. I hope you're enjoying this book, and uh, we'll, you'll hear from me in chapter 6.